This time I swear to you 100% completely and absolutely 100% right. Absolutely right. And I can prove it. So listen. So 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 so, so let's let's go quickly through the plot and let's arrive to the episode I want to talk about. First episode, Mochi is a girl who plays a lot of guitar. She has a YouTube channel with lots and lots of views. She's very talented and rocks hard. What are you talking about? I thought you said she was supposed to be relatable. Okay, yeah, well, she doesn't talk with too many people in school. Probably no people in school at all. But one day, one fateful day, she meets her Carl. Or well, in this version it's her Nijika. And Nijika comes and sees she shares, she shares, she shares. Okay, Nijika comes and she says that she needs her help to play a gig. <laughs> and but she accepts, or well, uh, she doesn't accept, but she isn't able to say no. And when you're an introvert, that's kind of the same. And episode 7. The dreadful, dreadful, dreadful episode 7. <laughs> Let's go from the start, okay? So Nijika and Kita decide to come to Pochi's house to think about some designs for the t-shirts they will wear at the concert. And since this is Pochi's first time inviting someone to her house, so let's please Think about how Pochi is feeling right now. I need you to put yourself in her in her in her shoes. Okay? So she's nervous. She's ner nervous. Ner nervous. 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 So she's nervous. She wants to increase the bond that she has with her friends. And she prepares a party and her family takes the attention. So she has to go back to the drawing board or something. You need to secure your position with your friends to keep them locked up. So it's a very delicate operation. Pay, pay, pay attention, pay attention. We need to increase those bonds. We need to increase those bonds. She's nervous that her family will either ruin it or take away the attention. She's bringing the people that she met in her comfort zone inside her own comfort zone. Okay, so she presents her design. Okay, and Nishika asks, is that really what you wear, Bochi? Is that, is that what you wear? That, that, that what you wear? Bochi says, my mom buys my clothes. My mom buys my clothes. You see, this sounds like a good strategy at first because you are deflecting the answer by saying, I don't handle that stuff, somebody else handles it for me. But the thing is that when an extrovert hears this, they're going to get curious. It's, it's like you're telling them, yeah, there is a whole side of me that you haven't seen yet. Because extroverts are like fishmen. They see a fish in the stream of conversation they like, and I kid you not, they won't let it go until they grab it. So be careful. Be really, really careful. And the worst part, and the worst part, is that when you have two extroverts in the same room, they're going to team up against you. <laughs> there is no way you can win. At this point, it's either saying yes or death. You can't kill the mood of the conversation. You have to comply. And then it starts. The extrovert wants to see that side of you and you're put even further and further away from your comfort zone, your safe zone. Those extroverts, they're like machines because it's all just like a game. They give you a compliment and they think that's enough, but it's not enough. It's not enough. You're being put in a place that you are not just the center of attention, but you feel uncomfortable as well. You feel self-conscious and the stress chances start going out of control and they want to leave proof. As if it wasn't enough. As if it wasn't enough. Like, can you believe that? Can you believe that? It has been so stressful, so stressful. And you say, hey, I comply. 
can we go back to normalcy, please? I need to go back to normalcy. This kind of attention is leaving me all numb. Please, I want to go back to normalcy. But you didn't notice. Once you said yes, there's no going back. And you try to say no. You try to say no. Uh, you try to say no. <sighs> and then this happens. This was a tragedy and you're laughing. You are laughing. So please, uh, I want you to pay attention to what Kita and Nishika are going to say in this part. Trust me, it's really, really important. I'm sorry for putting everything out of sheer possibility. I'm sorry for being a bad guitarist. I'm sorry for being too cute. You have to do the concert yourself. Now, now. No, 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 no. I can't stress this enough. But this scene is a representation of a fight between friends. Let's look at this scene in the manga. Okay, wait, the manga is exactly the same, so there isn't too much info. And Bochi, as we have seen here, and with the proof we have seen, has received stress levels that could not be handled. And she has been put aside in her comfort zone so badly. Do you know what happens when someone with really bad anxiety is pushed to a limit they can really handle? Okay, maybe not quite that, but they certainly explode. What happens when you explode? Yep, that happens. So now, please, take this over. What happens when you are enraged? When you want to yell and you are in the same room with someone? Yeah, you take that rage with someone else, right? And if you have dealt with emotions before, you can be sure that you will say things that you might not necessarily mean to others. Okay, so let's go back a bit to what Nijika says. I'm sorry for putting everything out out of sheer positivity. 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 Okay, it's fine. It, it, it's it's fine. It's absolutely fine. It's fine. I'm sorry for putting everything out out of complete cheerfulness or something. Let's translate that with the context added. Bochi insults Nijika. She tells her to step away and she says, Hey, now everything can be fixed with sheer positivity, okay? You have to give me my space and you are just being lovely dovely and it's pissing me off. You're stepping on my lane and you deserve to DIE! Something like that. And Nijika says that. I'm sorry for putting everything out out of sheer possibility. I just wanted to help. She says, Hey Bochi, calm down. It's not that bad. Nijika was just trying to help you out. But she says, And you, shut up! Shut up! Shut, sh shut your mouth! But she starts to lose ground because when she tries to recover her space, she has to put someone else against her. Nijika is put on the spot and Kita tries to de-escalate the situation. But it's too late. It's way too late. But she has to use any sort of weapons she might have to invalidate Kita's opinion. Otherwise, she's going to be seen as the bad person in this scene. And, and it's infuriating for her because it seems that either they didn't notice she was stressed out or they didn't care. Wouldn't you be angry too that someone would put you on the spot and didn't notice it and then try to judge you when you said, hey, you're putting me on the spot and I don't want to be like this? But she knows that Kita is having trouble with playing guitar and she quickly goes with that without thinking it over. She probably says something like, you're a bad guitarist, you suck at playing. I don't need your opinion here because you suck! You suck! She tries to shut her up and remember that these thoughts happen in a fraction of a second. So when Bachi realizes that she has in fact insulted Kita-chan, she tries to pull her on the shoes. But again, the words aren't coming out properly because she's full of anger. So Kita says, I'm sorry for being a bad guitarist. And then Bachi answers, you don't get how I feel or something like, you can dress all you want because you are pretty and everybody likes you, you're too cute, you're the worst person of all mankind, you're like a vermin or a parasite or something like that. And then Kita says, 
Okay. I'm sorry for being too cute. Kit apologizes and they go on, go on further. Why do you think she sent this, huh? If she really was dead, she would have sent no message. Or she could have said something, I'm sorry, Rio, we're dead. Carry the pan in our name. But no, she says, you have to do the concert on your own because we're done. That's what that message means. I have explained the meaning of this scene for some people and they say, but she will never do that. She's a nice person. She will never sue her friends, right? Uh, <laughs> you haven't learned a thing, have you? But she slowly walks out from the grave and with a lot of courage, she tries to make peace with her friends. And thankfully, Anna steps her back in. They realize what happened, they make peace, and everything is good again. And yeah, if you notice, that makes the whole reaction Nijikaz in the next scene a lot scarier. It is not that Nijika is magically starting to understand Bochi emotions and that Nijika is becoming a true, a complete empath, although she is. She's saying that because she knows that Bochi went through a lot. I know that you're thinking we'll have avoided this whole fight if we made this thing simpler from the beginning, and you're feeling that your suffering was for nothing. <laughs> But she has to take the embarrassment because she has her emotions revealed from the start. Thankfully for us, and you know, for Bochi, Nijika just shrugs it off and says, I'm starting to understand you a lot better, so come down, we learn from this, and we will move on. That's what dialogue means, right? And the battle is settled. Yeah, that's the thing, Bochi had a fight and a pretty bad one with her friends, they met up, and then they're back again. It's a really nice arc. It thematically speaking, and it wouldn't make me crazy. If it was about the fact that nobody else has noticed this. Nobody else has noticed this. You know, Bochi is a really good anime about social anxiety, like other anime about social anxiety that don't really depict social anxiety at all. But what bothers me is that sometimes people don't seem to notice that with anxiety and these kind of relationships between introverts and extroverts have their bumps to go through. Since this is a comedy slice of life anime, they're not going to tell you about the bad parts directly, but that doesn't mean they don't happen. They happen. So please pay attention to your introverts. And introverts, please. You have to take care of your nijikas. You have to take care of the relationships you have with the extroverts you know. And yeah, sometimes you won't know anybody. You have to be your own Carl. You have to be your own Nijika. So yeah, since nobody else in the English world seems to notice this, I have decided to learn Japanese and show the truth to the rest of the world. I will take the truth to the world. You just trust me. Kasa. It's going to take a while. 